Let's talk about stick curves. First, we go back. Options. Now we go to controls. We don't go to key bindings. Else. Set this one to stick holders. Now the first thing here is the inversion settings. I'm not going to change any inversion settings. Um, so we're Inversion settings means um, you're basically flipping up and down if you want to look up and down or other things, or even left and right. Yeah, joystick sensitivity curves. On foot is irrelevant for this tutorial because I'm not going to use a joystick while walking around. No, light. <clears throat> this setting, if changed, applies itself to all the other categories below it that are nested below it. So never touch this one, never touch this one, because you're going to mess up all your fine-tuned settings later. As you can see here, flight pitch, I got on custom. I'm going to explain in a few moments what that means. Flight yaw, remember there was a twist? I got on 3.0. Other custom things here. First, I'm going to use um, the flight yaw setting to explain what the joystick curve actually does. Edit curve, 3.0 setting, and it starts out at 1.0. What this means is that the y axis represents your, the movement of the axis on the stick in real life, and this one, the x part of the axis, so the x axis on this graph, shows you what the stick will do in-game. If it's like this, you get exactly one-to-one -one translation from real-life stick to in-game. Increase the curvature. Notice what happens. If the stick is moved to this point in real-life, on a one one setting, it would be over here, one to one. However, I reduced it, curvature three, which means it's probably five or three percent of what, what it does in real life. Only if you go further with it, it increases slowly. Now, what's the purpose of that? <clears throat> um, the reason curves exist, in my opinion, I think, is it's rooted in realistic flight simulators like DCS or other games. Basically, the average stick a player, um, a player has in, in a video game is a desktop stick. And the stick is probably 15, 20 centimeters in length. And the central rotation point when you hold it is about 10 centimeters from the rotation, from the rotation, um, from the rotation center on the stick base. It means if you, um, Gotta back up a bit. In in a real life plane, uh, in comparison to that, in in a real life plane, a World War II plane or modern helicopter, most modern jet fighters, stick base is more than half a meter, or more, sometimes even a meter in the ground um, below the actual stick where you hold it. So what does that mean? If if you're a jet pilot or a helicopter pilot in real life, if you move the stick a certain amount you um, create a smaller angle for the same amount of travel than on a, on a shorter stick. That means you have much more control in real life um, how fine you want to, um, how much fine control you want to have of the stick. In, in a video game, the, basically the shorter the stick, the more it, it gets compressed into, um, into more degrees movement per actual stick movement uh, on the stick, or rotation on the stick rather. But the problem with that is it will lead to extremely twitchy in-game gameplay on most flight simulators because they usually have realistically reproduced um, stick travel simulation, especially DCS, the flight simulator has it. If you, on most World War II plane set settings, you'll have a hard time accidentally, no, not accidentally, keeping the plane straight because it feels really twitchy because of this, the, the lack of precision you have compared to the real stick. So what sticks do in real life, sorry, what sticks do in, in video games, Curvature system, you can basically create more fine control in the early movement phase of the stick, this area. 
And then later you ramp it up. Again, the reason for that is, is rooted in realism. In real life, um, most flying, if it's combat flying or civilian flying, is most of it is done in the really small 5 to 10% range of the stick. We want to have as much precision in that part as you can. By the way, you don't want to lose stick precision at the end. And curves basically give you a trade-off. You have really low amount of um, stick movement, which means really high precision here, but then it ramps up really bad. And if you're in the last, um, move your stick 80% or something like over here, then you lose a lot of that precision because it's actually a, the rate at which the ramp goes up is much higher than you would if you would go linearly which means you're basically trading, you're losing um, stick precision at the, at the extremes, but you're gaining stick precision at the, um, at the beginning of the graph. And that's what the curvature system basically does. And for most cases, and again, that's a really good solution. Not for all cases, but for most cases. And in this case, for flight um, yaw, remember flight yaw is moving your nose left and right. The reason you want to have a high curvature for that thing is you rarely use it at full max rotation because if you think of it, when would you use yaw in, in a flying situation in the game? If you, for example, aim at a target or you want to aim for a quantum beacon or you just want to rotate your nose a slight bit towards something in zero G, then you would require just a small amount of movement and you want to have an extreme precision in small movement. That's why I use a really strong curve on this one. <clears throat> Let's go to flight. Uh, let's go to flight. Um, this one over here, flight pitch. Now this curve looks kind of weird, doesn't it? The reason it looks this weird, um, I'm gonna reset it to show you what I'm actually doing here. Like a slightly annoying bug. If you close the the curve settings, it you have to scroll down again. Uh, where is it over here? Reset it, just move the slider around, say yes. Edit curve. Now, what I'm doing here is um, something I use, like to use in, in DCS. First, double click on the curve, press yes. Now I'm gonna edit out all the points of the stick. Moving this one, can't move the maximum down here, so I'm just gonna try to guess where the center is of this thing. Now what I'm doing here is I'm basically cutting off the, the maximum stick movement. I'm compressing it down to 25% because it's here, it's, here. it's um, eight squares. and. I'm, Kind of missed the point here. I'm cutting it down to to a quarter of what's maximum possible. Now why would I do that? Because again, I want to have maximum precision in the small movements. The problem with using a curve setting is that the curve is not linear in its movement, which means, um, however, this thing is linear, which means if I move the stick, this amount, it's moving like that. It's moving flat on the curve. However, it's it's straight, which means you get the get the same rate of movement as you move the stick and it gives you more precision. Now the only problem with that is if I would keep it at 25%, I would never be able to use the rest of the stick movement. And maybe there's a situation in the game where I actually might need to do it. Maybe in combat, do a really hard pull on something. And this is why I keep it about here. Drag the points. Push them up like that. And maybe this one a bit more like that means I got my 25% movement almost to the end of the range. And then what? Huh? Hard to get right. It doesn't really matter if you get it exactly as you want it. Basically, that's, that's my preference. I like, to, I like to do it like that. 
For most players, you can just use a curve if you feel safer with that. But I like this um, um, even rate of it, even progression rate of, of that thing, of, of the graph to be like that. It, it's actually customer now. It just did an update. Get it here. And I can just close inversion settings. Good settings. You see now it says customs, customer here. Now I got a very similar setup for roll. Roll again is you move your stick left, right, and your plane starts rolling along its length axis, along its front back axis. That's a thing you do. That's a control like pitch. You use it all the time, and you want extreme precision when you do it, because most of flying requires it like this. Now get a curve. Now it looks really similar to the curve I just made. It's it's not the same, but um, it's good for my purposes. Also, I'm going to um, post the, this complete profile um, in a link below the video, so you can just copy it over into your own settings. And if you want to exactly copy a particular curve, you can actually open the XML file and paste the values of the curve points and paste it into your own if you like it like this, or if you just want to modify it. Okay, flight roll, yaw. Now, as you notice here, flight strafe up, down. Remember, that's um, basically our hover mode. I keep that at 1.0 and no curve at all, and for strafing also. So the reason for that is if you use your thrust level, you want to have linear full maximum control. It means you move at 50%, you want to have 50% thrust. That's something you don't want to have a curve. It should be as even as possible, so no curve, I'm going to use that. else in the curve settings um, with the dead zones I haven't experimented I just let it let them at default and it works for me so I have no particular recommendation to use it or to not use it 